everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning, and that is it. If you guys want to grab any of my teas, you can also take a look at a video that I put together talking about these teas, describing the teas. I'll put a link over here. Check them out if you'd like to. Anyways, guys, I hope you're hanging out with me with your cup of tea, cup of coffee, or what have you. Today, we'll be talking about tech. Normally, we do tech, video, and photo, but today is definitely a tech day. Apple ended up releasing their brand new products. They made this amazing event happen, and it was called Peak Performance. And wow, it was a really good event. When we see like photographic events, there hasn't been anything that was really wow as of late. Well, I shouldn't say that. The Nikon Z9 event was pretty damn amazing. They did a really good job. But other events like the latest Panasonic event for their G6, what an absolute joke that was. Um, but when we see Apple events, they are the pinnacle, right? The pinnacle. They did a, such a good job at putting it together. My question is, is it time to move back over to Apple from PC? Now, before I get into this event and what they talked about, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out over at jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books, 10 tips of making tax sharp images. There's something there for everyone. There's also the prologue of this book over here, how to create a digital Fort Knox backing up your digital life. Go pick up some of those books. They are 100% free. I originally started out with Apple way back in the day. When I say back in the day, I'm talking about an Apple II Plus. That's what I started out using and a Sinclair and then Commodore VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 and some other basic computers back then. And Amiga, that was pretty amazing too, especially for graphics back then. Anyways, I was an Apple guy and have always been an Apple guy for all of my life, basically. And as of about two and a half, three years ago, I ended up taking all of the studio off of Apple and moving them to PC. And that was the same time that I created the Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series. If you don't know about that, go into my playlist, find the Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. It's when I cut the cord with Adobe, 100%. Cold Turkey got rid of Adobe products off every one of our servers, every one of our computers in the studio. Now, right around that time was when Apple was going through this phase where they were just phasing out the professionals. They were going almost all consumer and it was really pissing me off because there was no pro Apple units out there. They ended up going from the cheese grater and then finally they did the coffee can and whatnot. And they were okay, but they just were not what I was looking for. And those machines were like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, probably like five grand per machine. And we had to get about five. You're talking about $25,000. I ended up building the machine that I have here that I'm using right now, which will do 4K perfectly for about 1700 bucks, I think it was. And I did a video on that too, literally from soup to nuts, from beginning to end building this setup. And in the show notes or in the notes below or the description below, you'll see all of the parts that I used to build it. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. It is a Ryzen build and it was cheap. It was less than half the price of an Apple equivalent at the time. And once again, Apple wasn't making professional products. They really weren't. And back then is when we saw Final Cut go from Final Cut Pro to Final Cut X. It really pissed me off and a lot of issues. So we ended up moving to DaVinci also. So there was a lot of flux going on back then, especially for professionals moving away from Apple. Well, as the advent of the M chip, that Apple Silicon, that's absolutely just amazing. Well, a lot of people like myself, creatives, photographers, videographers are moving back into Apple. And if you don't know anything about Apple, maybe you've been a PC user all of your life, just think about a PC, but just simply works, right? Where instead of having to download drivers all the time and going through this, that, and the other thing, you don't have to do it. The Apple just simply works. You can get your work done. And that was one of the problems I always had with Apple is it was specifically for work. You really couldn't game on it because there was not a lot of games that supported it until the Intel chipset came out. And then there was a little bit of gaming possible with it. Not a lot, but a little bit. And now we're moving into the M chipset, the M1. And I wanna to talk to you guys about it a little bit. So this peak performance, they call it. I'm just gonna brush through some of the stuff that's not really important to us or 
I don't think would be important to you as a photographer or videographer. Number one would be the iPhone, iPhone 13. They talked about the actual unit itself being faster and they introduced, of course, the SE model having the exact same power as the old pros of yesterday. And the big thing was they came out with two different green color phones whatever. It really doesn't make any much of a difference to me. And then secondly, they talked about the iPad and how it was faster, faster USB-C port, as well as having that 5G connectivity, the better processor, basically the processor that you see in a low end, let's say an iPad Air is the same type of processor, the M1, that you would see in a pro of yesteryear, I guess you would call it. So they got a little bit better. And the same thing with the camera on the back. We have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. The problem that I always have with Apple is they never went past this 12 megapixel thing and they still haven't even today. I don't get it. Does it look good? Yes, they do a really good job for 12 megapixels, but God, man, you can <laughs> go up a little bit. Apple, maybe 20, 24, something like that. I love iPads. I use the iPad Pro all the time, especially for drawing and stuff that you guys probably don't even know about, but I draw a lot. And I really enjoy drawing on the iPad. It just feels right. Anyways, moving into the Apple Silicon. Now, they change things up a little bit. You have the M1 chip, you have the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, as well as now the M1 Ultra. And this is what a lot of people were looking for, like me and you, something that was faster. And I was speculating it was going to be an M2, right? An M2 was going to come out, but not as of yet. And I'm going to get into that before the end of this video. This is an M1 Ultra, and this thing is just simply badass. Just think of it as taking a M1 Max chip and then putting it side by side and now putting them together with that fusion technology, right? That high speed, low latency, I think it's like 2.5 terabytes of data in between the two processors. So now you have two Max chips side by side, let's say, on the silicon wafer that are married together. And what's really cool about that is even though there's two chips, instead of all of the architects out there, the software engineers having to write for the two chips, they don't have to because those two chips look like one chip to the software designers. So they don't have to do anything different. There's no reprogramming that has to be done. And I'm sure there's a lot of software engineers out there that are happy about that. So we have this chip now that is supposedly like 90% more powerful than any Intel chip that's currently out there while using like 100 watts less of power. Now their exact words is this, the custom Apple Silicon architecture means that these two M1 Max chips behave as one chip, preserving the benefits of unified memory, Apple's answer to conventional RAM. With a memory bandwidth of 800 gigabytes per second up to 120 28 gigabytes total. That is a lot of this unified memory that's literally on the chip itself that's maxed out. The M1 Ultra features 20 core CPU with 16 high performance cores and four efficiency cores, as well as 64 GPU cores and four media engines plus 32 core neuro engine. So there's a lot going on here in that little silicon wafer. It is a full computer just everything that you need, CPU, you have your neuro engine as well as your GPUs, 64 GPUs all in that one wafer. And then using it or doing it with like 100 watts less power than Intel. And that is, I think, why Apple is doing really well with that M1 chip. Number one, it's their own silicon. So if there's no chips, well, it's their own fault. They're not relying on a third party like Intel or AMD or whoever to create these chips for them. They do it themselves. That's it. The only thing that Apple needs is the actual material level components like your tin, your aluminum, your magnets and whatnot. So one of the things that I think that is really exciting for someone like you or I that are a videographer or a photographer or someone in the creative industry, even music, is their new Mac Studio that they came up with. I think these things are awesome. Just think of two Mac minis piled one on top of each other. So it's 3.7 inches tall and the same seven by seven by seven form factor, all right? Just two, literally stacked one on top of another. This is really quite cool. And the power that they're putting into these things for the price 
is I think something that we should all look into. So often we see photographers like myself, videographers like what I do, and even music musicians, they will use a laptop and then dock the laptop. Why do that? Get one of these Mac studios and now you just use whatever monitor you want and you don't have to waste that. Number one, waste of money, waste of space, and have this thing docked that most of the time never gets undocked. And we see that all the time. So this is something definitely to look at. Now, what they said here was half of the space, the internal space of this double height mini, let's call it, that unit itself, half the space is all active cooling, like a big ass fan, let's call it, guys. So it's twice the thickness, but half of the thickness is just for cooling. And that makes sense because now we're starting to get into a lot more power when it comes to such a small form factor. And we know the more electric, the more power, the more things that you need a CPU or a GPU to do, the more heat it generates. The same thing with the cameras, right? You have them doing all kinds of processing in the background or saving, let's say out 4K video or 8K video, what happens? They overheat. So what they're doing is they're putting an M1 Max or an M1 Ultra into these units. Now, if you get the M1 Ultra, you will get two Thunderbolt ports, whereas if you're doing the M1 Max, you end up with two USB-Cs on the front. But on the back, of course, you have your standard Thunderbolt on both of them. So that's really quite cool. Now, these Mac Studios, which I think are amazing, they come with those Thunderbolt ports, which are the 10 gigabit Thunderbolt, as well as Ethernet ports. You have your two USB-A ports so that you have your legacy, that backwards compatible as well as your HDMI in the back and your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So for me, this is the one that I think a lot of you guys are going to be interested in. I know I am interested in it. So we'll see what ends up happening with it. Now, what Apple has claimed here, which I thought was amazing, is that this brand new Mac Studio, the one that has the M1 Ultra in it, is 90% faster than the existing Mac Pro. Mac Pro guys, that is amazing in this little seven by seven by seven form factor, 3.7 inches tall. That is unbelievable. I think a lot of studios like mine, for example, can go with a bunch of these Mac minis. Now they're called Mac Studios, the larger ones that have these M1 Ultras built into them. Those I think are going to be fast enough to do any type of 4K, editing, rendering, or anything that you needed to do photographically, and even doing 3D work. There's a lot of studios out there that are getting into 3D, obviously because of the whole metaverse stuff. So they're starting to compile 3D animated stuff for clients. And now they're realizing, holy crap, we need a lot, a lot of power to do that. And supposedly this unit will be able to do it. And the price of this unit would be right around $4,000. Now thinking about it, you say it's a Mac mini for $4,000. Yes, this is the ultra version. If you got one of these Mac studios with the Max chip in it, the M1 Max, which is still good, you're gonna pay right around $2,000 for it. So 2,000 or 4,000, it's kind of up to you. For me, I think that having maybe one of the $4,000 units and then a bunch of the $2,000 units is probably the way to go. And anything really computationally heavy, you would use on that heavier duty machine. And that's until the actual pros come out. And I'll get into that in just a second. Now, what Apple also claimed for this M1 Ultra version of their Mac Studio is that it will be able to, check this out, run 18 streams of 8K ProRes 422 video. And it will save up to 1,000 kilowatts of power per year just by using that in comparison to an Intel-based machine. 18 streams of 8K ProRes 422. That is unfrickin' believable for a $4,000 machine that has a form factor of seven by seven by seven by seven that is less than four inches tall. I don't even know. 
I don't even know. That's amazing to me. Absolutely amazing. They also talked about the Apple Studio display, but I really don't want to get into them too much. Basically, the current Pro, as they call it, Pro Display XDR is like $5,000 for that thing. And if you ended up getting the stand, the stand is like another thousand bucks or something. So you're like at $6,000. They were talking about a version of this. It's only going to be about 27 inches wide and it's going to be about $1,599. I'm going to say this is more of a consumer monitor. I will wait to see the new professional monitor that comes out from Apple, but it has not been announced. Now, coming back full circle to my statement about the M2 and how this is not the M2 that a lot of people thought that it would be. It is a M1 Ultra, right? So we have an M1, an M1 Pro, an M1 Max, and now we have the M1 Ultra. Well, at the end of this event, they kind of left everyone hanging with the idea that we have not told you about the Mac Pro as of yet. And they just kind of left it at that as it will be soon revealed, let's say, or something so that we still are on the fence. Well, is there going to be a Mac Pro this year or is there not? I would venture to say we're going to see an Apple Mac Pro, their professional version, their cheese grater, their coffee maker, whatever you want to call it, probably in a new form factor. We're going to see that before the end of 2022. And I'm going to state as of right now, I think that that will be the flag ship for the M2. And the M2 in my version, or what I think it could be, is now think about right now they're taking two M1 Maxes and putting them together, right? And calling it a Mac Ultra, using that fusion technology to fuse the two together so that they look like one chip. Well, I'm going to guess like an M2 would probably be two of these twos or four of their M1 Maxes combined with this fusion technology. That's what I'm probably gonna guess what's gonna happen. They'll probably do some other things going on to multiply things. Like right now we see 64 uh, GPU cores, maybe it'll be at 128, 128 cores. Maybe the CPU, instead of having 20 cores, it'll have 40 cores. Maybe eight of those will be those high efficiency cores and 32 will be the, let's say, more powerful cores. So this is what I think that will happen. And then moving forward into 2023, we'll probably see some other devices that will now get that M2 chip in there as a top of the line upgrade to them. But this, of course, is just sheer speculation. But this is what I think that Apple will do now. Back to what I was saying, is it time to go and move from PC back to Apple? And for me, I will say no. And the reason being is I know that the M1 chip is now pretty solid when it comes to being able to use it without any hiccups. I'm not a beta tester for any company unless they pay me. I'm certainly not going to pay them to beta test for them. It's just not going to happen. And this could possibly interrupt production and whatnot. So I don't like moving into Gen 1 anything. Ever. And that includes cameras. I wait until a Mark II comes out before I go and buy it. Why? Because I'll let other people fish through all the problems and let the corporation actually fix the problems before I get involved. So I think the M2 will be right for me or right for the studio moving forward. So I will definitely be looking at that Mac Pro to see if it does have that M2 chip in it. And if it does, we might be moving back, guys from PC to Apple. We will see. The problem, once again, is like I've said from the very beginning, and Apple has always had this problem, is with games and gamers. A lot of people do not game on Apple because there's always been no games out there. It was notorious for having only a few games, and that's it. Even when it comes to, perfect example is like QuickBooks. If you have QuickBooks on a PC, you get the absolute best QuickBooks out there, period. If you get the QuickBooks for the Apple, what do you get? Shit. That's what you get. Absolute garbage. You get like a QuickBooks that was made five years ago. Why that is, I don't know, but it's always been like that. So in my opinion, as the M1 or even the M2 becomes more prolific and it's out there and a lot of these game houses make games for that specific chip, I think things are going to get better and better and better for Apple as time goes on. Because a lot of the people out there, not only do they want to use their Apple to do production work, which is great, 
but they also want a game. There's a lot of people that love gaming. And now I'm not talking about just kids. I'm talking about adults. They just enjoy it. It's a fun pastime. Matter of fact, right back there, you see that? That is my Xbox One. I'll tell you, there's something that I'm working on right now, a project, and I'll tell you why that's back there in probably the next week. <laughs> we'll see. I'm doing a review of something. It's going to be really fun. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this even a little bit. If you have, please throw this video a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you in the next one. Love you all.